Um, I would now like to recognize Mr. Sablon for five minutes. Is hearing, and um, I, I want to thank Mr. Cisneros for uh, allowing me to take his time. Um, Ms. Carson, I mean, sometimes I fancy just thinking if only we had the luxury of um, taking all the regulations, all the law, sitting down with with BA and and working with them so that we make things easier and more effective and efficient for our veterans. I know it's a fancy, it's a luxury, we do But Ms. Carson, um, one of the common concerns about the CODs, the character discharge process raised by advocates is the lack of specific guidance provided to veterans, to VASRs, about the types of misconduct that bars eligibility for VA benefits and leads to inconsistent decisions. So I don't really understand how a BSR can evaluate a claim without such guidance. In your statement, you mentioned the mandatory block of COD training required of new BSRs and five additional training modules on COD determinations. So does the training COD training provide uh, any guidance on the types of misconduct that would bar eligibility for benefits? And if so, what are those types of misconduct? Thank you for that question. Um, yes, the training does provide, it, it pro provides information pertaining to the statutory bars as well as to the regulatory bars. The training also provides examples and scenarios so that uh, CSRs can understand the um, types of um, facts and circumstances and what the records look like, where they go to get information, um, how that information is um, to be viewed. And again, we are not um, legally going through and re, re, um, re adjudicating or redetermining whether or not a court martial was in order. What we are doing is we're looking at that and seeing if there are any mitigating or compelling reasons why we should consider it, consider so, that to be honorable. So, so I, let me understand this because do I understand it correctly that a discharge would be honorable, general, dishonorable. So when VSRs look at a discharge, a DD-214, for example, they should be able to tell exactly what it is that that is the discharge for the uh, veteran. And if the decision on what the status or what the, the type of discharge is for that particular veteran is made by the Department of Defense, then how do your, your BSRs determine a different one? For example, just, yeah, thank you. All right, so so one of the things, so there, so there are three that generally are honorable for VA purposes or considered honorable, and most dd 214s would have honorable on it, general, general under honorable conditions. Those are I, all I get, honorable I get that, yes. But then there are, there are three others. There's the, the dishonorable, there's one that sometimes says bad conduct, and then there's the OTH. The OTH also has a reason. It, the DE-214 says OTH, and then it will have a reason. The reason could stay in lieu of court martial or other things that require okay. us then to go to the COD to get the facts and circumstances and review those. Okay, so so BSRs actually can review it, and um, I, I I'd be remiss if I don't um uh, ask um um a question um pertaining to you know the people the, the district that I serve, which is at one time was if you sail across the ocean and come to my district, it would fall off a cliff, but we're so far away. So I must ask Ms. Carson, what services does the department provide to assist OTH veterans, particularly in underserved areas, such as my district, the Northern Mariana Islands, the only district in the United States of America, which does, has, has neither a CBOC or even a vet center? What so I, I'm asking if you provide services to 
um, my district, um, I, my veterans. So thank you for that. We do provide certain benefits and services to veterans on the um, islands. And I would um, also ask Ms. Mr. Miller to tell us about health care with regards to um, uh, Marina Allen. Thank you, uh, Representative Sablon, uh, for the opportunity to respond as well. I understand that there is not a CBOC nor a vet center um, at that location. I believe your care falls under VA Pacific Island Healthcare System, centered in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. But I understand that they 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 travel across many 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 time zones um, to take care, and beneficiary travel is also. A concern there. You asked specifically about other than honorable uh, discharges and what what services are available there. I would like to point out for your constituents and for all constituents that other than honorably discharged service member presents to VA for health care treatment with an immediate care for need, um, even if it were were Dr. Rowe, the ranking member who exceeds income limits. Um, if that is if that is related um, to a, a service connection, or if it is emergency need, particularly in a mental health crisis, those options are available to those veterans. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Miller. I know my time's, Madam Chair, um, um, but I'm just going to also throw in another example for myself personally, where I I was in the reserve component, um, Echo Company of the 100, and I'm in the 411 Pro. And um, in my search for my DD-214, I've got the only one I have is a three-day intake at Fort Jackson. And I went to Fort Benning for my basic and AIT. But I do have a certificate of honorable discharge. Um, so I don't know how to do that. I'm not asking for search-seeking services, but I'm sure there are others also who are missing. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, and I'm over my time, way over. So I, I apologize, but uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Sablon, uh, for joining us.